as I have the opportunity to share with you the gospel and discipline of financial management. I want to ask a very quick question. Why do you want to be a great preneur or a business person in agriculture? Why? Can somebody share with me why you want to be that? Yes. Loud, yeah. You want to make money, right? How many of you want to make money? Wow, 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 wow. I'm reading from a proverb, chapter 13, verse 11. And I read, Wealth from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappear. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Wealth from get-rich scheme, get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Listen carefully. What is the first job God created? Or first work? I want to use the word work, not job. What was the first work God created? You see, our problem in Africa, and for that matter for Ghana, is that we've changed the equation. I remember growing up, all those who built nice houses in Kumasi, Ashtown, and Bantima were all farmers. Forty years ago, Ghana had a problem with bush farming, bush uh, in the farms, burning in the farm. So most of the farmers came to town. But there's a good news. Now, because all of us came to town, we are finding it difficult. And the money decided to go back. So now money's, money has gone back to the farm. So we have to do a back turn. And that is the perception I want you to have. Now the money has gone back to the farm. But listen carefully. There are three things in any field. If you practice, you can succeed. Three things. And I want you to take good notes. Somebody said she wants to do farming for money. Let me help you. You see, in the kingdom principle, the reason why you want to do something is to meet a need. If you put money as your focus, you can do anything to get the money. And that will not bring fulfillment. But when you meet a need, you are rewarded. And listen carefully. If you want to get money, money in itself, like this one, is valueless. Money has no value unless there's a product or a service. Let me give you a typical example. When Ghana, we were asked to go on uh, to uh, do, during the lockdown. How many of your parents were going to buy new vehicles? Everybody was going to buy who, what? Food. So, for example, assuming you had, a man, you had money in full of this room, but going, to, going for lockdown, you didn't take food. And you were hungry, about to die. And somebody comes around and gives you just a kilo. He says he has a kilo of rice for you. And you ask how much, and he says the value of that kilo of rice is the amount of money in the room. Will you buy the rice or not? You buy. So it tells you the value. At that time, the value of the money has been determined by the, a kilo of rice. So don't pre be preoccupied about money. Your preoccupation should be producing a product or a service. Listen carefully. In the environment in which we find ourselves, let me add that for you to succeed, you need success is 10% knowledge. All the things through minister has told us and all the information we've received is building your knowledge bank. And that knowledge is 10%. Going to school, the knowledge of yourself, the knowing what to do, that knowledge constitutes 10% of success. The other success contribution to success is character. Character is 40%. Listen carefully. Now, businessmen and businesswomen are looking for people with character. And I like the testimony of the first beneficiary with this guy. Uh, is it, what's your name? Solomon. Sharing with us how he is working hard. The character of working hard. Listen, work is one of the best gifts God has given to mankind. Through work, you review yourself. Through work, you you able to produce your kind. So work is critical. The character to work, young men and young women, 
most of you want to be so rich, but they are, you are not prepared to be working. You don't have the character of working hard. You don't have the character of going beyond the limit. The character of producing the best of your kind. That character, 40%. Some of you seated here, you wish you had money. Some of them, when you recruit them, they want to be like you within one month. They want to ride the same vehicle like you. But the best of you is your character. The good book says a good name is better than riches. So your character. What is your character? What is your character? Your character. I want, you, I want you to begin to think through. And unfortunately, don't know, but the mistake we make as Ghanaians is that we think Ghana is somewhere and we are sitting somewhere. But you see, you make Ghana. So the character of telling yourself, I want to contribute to the GDP of Ghana, it should become a character. And thank God for people like Nana. And he's a hard-working man, young man, very hard-working, I tell you. Always, if, if I want to talk to him, at some time I have to chase him, Nana, he's working in the farm, hard-working. He's a very good friend. But that character, do you have it? Character is 40% of success. Character, how faithful are you as a, char a character trait? What is your faithfulness? When we give you little, will, will you be able to multiply it? That's a character. The other aspect of success is the environment. Tell somebody the environment. the environment. Listen carefully as young men and young women. Some of you, your mind, you are a Ghanaian, but your mindset is like you are in America. You want to, you think like you are in America. That's what the, a wrong personality in Ghana. The environment. You don't see anything good in the environment in which you find yourself. When we talk of environment, we are talking about time. Time is an environment God has given to you. And the beauty is that God has given to us for free. How many of you have 25 hours a day? All of us are having 24 hours. The poor and the rich. The problem with the poor is that the poor has more time. He looks at, hey, African, I bought, oh, this African, I bought three. He thinks that it should have been 7 o'clock. The poor has more time. But the rich don't have, the time is not there. Time. What do you do with your time? You see, everything you do, listen carefully. If you commit 10,000 hours to it, any subject, any field, any profession, if you commit 10,000 hours to that thing you want to do, you become an expert. Anything. 10,000 hours, you dedicate yourself. 10,000 hours, calculated, you become an expert in that field. To the point is the environment. Do you appreciate, you see, the essence of the environment is that you, is, our problem is that we see with our naked eyes. That's the lowest level of, of, a, of, of a living thing. Seeing with the, just the eye. But you need to see, go to the next level, see with your mind. That's why a blind man will say, oh, yes, I see. Because he's seeing with the mind. If you see with the mind, when you see tree, you see chair in the tree. When you see with the mind, when you see soil, you see a plant in it. So when you begin to see with your mind, you can take advantage of the environment. God wants us to explore the environment, discover the environment, and take advantage of the environment. So environment is critical. Another good thing within the environment God has given to us for free, I did mention, is work. When God blessed man, he dedicated man to work. Work is a gift. It's a, one of the best gifts God has given to us. So another thing God has given to us as an environment is the things we see around the air, the, the, the people. The people is the environment, within the environment. The, even the Ghana you see. How do you see Ghana? What is your perception about the environment? Even from your hometown, what do you see in the environment? The challenge is that when we find ourselves in an environment, we, we want to leave that environment. We don't sit back and analyze the environment and take advantage of the environment. We want to leave that place. And another thing within the environment God has given to us is what we call law and order. Tell somebody law and order. Law. Nothing can develop without law and order. Life has been designed to operate within law and order. And coming back to my subject, where I'm trying to help you, when you be, so that you can manage your finances. Listen, when you use the environment, 
to produce goods or services. That's why we say you are rich. A rich person is not the one who has money in the bank. Is a rich person is the one who has a product or a service. You see, when they are mentioning the richest person in the world, talking about billions, it's not that they have the billions stuck in the bank, but it's about the product and the number of people who are benefiting from the product. That's why they quantify that this person is a what billionaire or whatever. So when you're able to use your environment to produce goods or services, for the benefit of the people around. That is why you become rich. And listen carefully. Somebody can be rich and the person might not have money. And that's the problem with our, mother, uh, our fathers who are peasant farmers. The, the moment it rains, all of them will be growing the same crop. Because, you see, they, they are rich. But they are poor. Because, you see, before you do farming, you look at the market. Look at the need. So when you are bringing any innovation... You don't just sit in your room and bring the innovation. You have to look around your environment. What is the need? So that you bring that innovation for the people to take advantage of the solution. And when they are taking advantage of the solution, they come with a reward. And the reward is when they are prepared to pay for the exchange of the service or the goods you are pro producing. So my po point is that when you enter into the farming, listen carefully. I have listened to the stories from Perfect and the other colleagues. I did a bit of research, and I like the guy who came to mention about Mushroom Nana, and I have had some discussion. You know, the world value of Mushroom is $55 billion. The world value of Mushroom is $55 billion. And the question is, uh, Honorable Minister is here, if Ministry of Fruit decide, oh, let us now concentrate on, Cocoa is just giving us a little below $2 billion. And we say, God, give us 10% of the world value of mushroom. We are thinking about $5.5 billion, uh, $5 billion. And mushroom, you don't need a bigger space. And it's not, the environment in here is so conducive for the production of mushroom. I'm just throwing that number to you for you to begin to think that agri is the thing for us to concern ourselves with. So my point to you is that when you're able to identify a need and you begin to think big but start small a journey of a thousand miles begins with what but you the youth you don't start a journey of a thousand miles with a step you want to rent like a same boat you but a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step and that is why agri house thank god for the leadership they've brought to you this is the journey and this step is so huge they're going to build your capacity or reorient your mind. Position you so that you have the right thinking framework to do things. So now you've, you are taking a step. Listen, when you get money, when the product is in and you get a harvest, what you do is that money, one principle about your financial management is that money is not meant to be spent. Money it's not meant, tell somebody, the money is not meant to be spent. Some of you, the moment you get money and you are buying something, you are all, most of you are consumers. <laughs> the moment some of you have the grace, the moment the money gets into you, you'll be shivering. Until you spend the money, you are not comfortable. There's a spirit where the moment you get money, you want to spend it. But money is not meant to be spent. Money is meant to be saved and to be invested. Nobody has saved money and become millionaire. But you save money for investment. Hello? You save money for investment. Unfortunately, in another challenge we are faced that we go to school and we assume we understand some of these things. They don't teach you about money. Has anybody taught you about the loss of money? We don't. And what I'm sharing with you are some of the loss of money. The moment you get money, the first thing you need to think of is how much can I save? And as a young man and a young woman, any money you get, make sure you save 50%. 50%. Be conscious. It's, it doesn't matter about the quantum. It's about the character you are building. The moment you get money, young man, you have not married, save 50%. There's a scripture in the Bible, Proverbs 24, verse 27. The Bible says, 
Prepare your field. Plant. After that, you build a house. And that is what is killing Ghanaians. Our problem as Ghanaians are that we have changed the equation. Everybody wants to build. And Ghanaians, we are rich. If you want to do assessment of the assets we have, because all the monies are in the country. Castro said, where has the money gone? It's in the concrete. We've built. Everybody is building. And unfortunately, we are, we, it's not bringing us anything. And they are crying. We are crying because the money has gone into the concrete and, and then the, the, the buildings that we see. But the Bible says, prepare your field. Pr plant a crop, after which you build a house. So my advice for you, as you save, don't rise to build a house. Prepare your field. Have, a, ha have a, a farm. When you have a farm and you cultivate, you generate income, and that will, that's what you're going to use to build a house. Are you with me? Money is not meant to be spent. Money is meant to be saved and to invest. If you are a child of God, you go to church and you believe in this principle, you can pay 10% of any money you get to the church as tight, and then you can do 5% of the money as contribution to the society. If somebody is in need, you help. It's, you are left with 85. Out of the 85%, that's what I'm saying, if you're a young man, you save 50%. Leave within the 35%. Some of you, you have to do phone fasting. You buy data. So within a month, tell yourself, this month I won't buy data. You buy data and say, hello, how are you? How? And some of the sad things, on, they think that those are not part of their income. They are enjoying data, but they don't, think, they don't know that they are consumers. And the sad things are the poor ends up buying more data. Because they think they are smart. They are buying one city, two city, one city. <laughs> Combined, by the time they say that at the end of the month, they are spending more money in buying these data. So I have mentioned to you that money is not meant to be, but it's meant to be, and that's the first point. Another point is that make sure you understand the principle between assets and liability. Anything that you have to keep on funding is a liability. If you have a car and you are not using the car to bring you money, it's a liability to you. If you have a phone and you're always buying data, Without using the data to do research, to add value to yourself, is a liability. So the asset is the one that always brings you income. The other thing is that live within your means. Please don't, don't try to impress people who do not care. Some of you young men and some of you are saving for, to marry. And the sad thing is that the people you want to impress that week, after one week, they will not remember that your wedding was separate. They will forget about everything. And you end up fighting in the, in, uh, at the honeymoon. You'll be fighting. I remember a guy who did that. And when they went and they were uh, trying to count the money, they realized that ah, the, the expectation wasn't met. And they started fighting. And then I was in good that night now. Listen carefully. Don't live to impress people or you'll be depressed. You'll be depressed. Live a life that you'll be impacting. That a life that will be you become a producer, changing society around you. So live within your means. If you are, if you go to church, in fact, this week is for Ramadan. In fact, that's the economic benefit of Ramadan is that this week you make sure that you are not eating. So you make savings. It's economic benefit. If you're a Christian and you are also fasting, it has economic benefit. So do it strategically. You, you benefit spiritually at the same time, you benefit from pocket-wise aspect. So I encourage you, please make sure you live within your means. Another advice for you in order to expand your business. Listen, I have told you that think big, but start small. Tell somebody, think big, but start small. Whatever you get, you have to make sure that your source is critical. Make sure where you started from you become a market player, you are in control of the market. You must lead. We are talking about, in fact, I did a Greek, I did a Greek at Topokura School, and I did a Greek at UCC. At that time, a Greek was very difficult. It's still difficult, oh, okay. <laughs> and the sad thing is that, at that time, I was worried that they were asking us to chew uh, botanical names. I told the lecturer, this, this doesn't make sense. 
And that's one of the reasons why it's not becoming attractive. The botanical names of tomato. I was like, ah, what do we do with botanical names? <laughs> and they will ask questions. So that's the, the issue is that I happen then to come to the Ministry of Food and Agri as a procurement officer, which I practiced for 16 years as a procurement person. What I have realized, listen carefully, I have concluded beyond reasonable doubt that money is in agriculture. And now, if you ask me the work I do, I tell people I'm a farmer. I have started having my small farm. I'm not like Nana. I'm doing small uh, coconut plantation, rubber plantation. This year, I'll start my oil palm plantation. But in fact, I have my, uh, my branded rice. It's called Ohima rice. And then another one is called Aduna rice. That's the product that I, I, I bring to the market. What I'm trying to tell you is that, listen, whatever you receive, whatever you get, I want you to, as part of this uh, boot camp, don't leave here as you used to be. I want you to reorient your mind. As a man think it, so is. You are not different from your thought. So my first question is, are you comfortable with where you are in life? How many of you are com comfortable? You see, the difference between what you were yesterday and what you want to be tomorrow is what you do today. In fact, the best gift God can ever give to you is today. The person who died yesterday, who was a billionaire, unless you do something today better than what the person was, the person will still be controlling. In fact, some of you, you are living based on other people's opinion. And those people have died and gone, and you are still using their opinion. Listen, if you want to change your tomorrow, today is an opportunity for you. Today, 24 hours, you can change. You can rearrange your life and become the best in the society. On this note, I want to thank you for such an opportunity. God bless you.